free to like and join us on the Intoxicating Tastings Facebook page. used to start recommending wine um like when you go to the bar they have center home or vintage wine and so uh, that's another reason i don't go to bars much anymore because i prefer wine over alcohol now and i just refuse to drink either of those so i would recommend barefoot well um as your palate matures you realize that barefoot even though it's very in a very good price range is uh not going to be the best wine for people who have a good palate for wine. So then I started recommending Fetzer. And Fetzer is still a decent quality of wine for a good price range. Or Kim Crawford for the people who want to spend a little bit more money. But what I really realized is that I was cheating them um, on good quality wines that were out there. So everybody looks for Moscato's or um, Riesling's or... Pinot Grigio's or Pinot Gris and Sauvignon Blancs and Chardonnay. Everybody knows those. And there are many good vendors who make it. You got domestic ones, you have imported ones. Um, there's a good variety of, of people who make those. But there are also these other beautiful uh, winemakers who make different wine that we are totally neglecting. And you can get for a phenomenal price range, okay? So this is one of them. This is a Domaine de Puy. Uh, that's the vineyard. And it is a Côte de Gascogne, or Gascogne, okay? It is made in France, which is why you hear my French accent. <laughs> and it is made in the southwest region of France, okay? So anyone who tuned in to us last week or saw my video rotating out there um, knows that we did Armagnac last week. And Armagnac is also made in the southwest region of France. And actually, they are subdivisions of each other where this is made. This is made in Gascony, which is why it's called, uh, even though they have different spellings, Gascony. It's like winemakers and liquor makers are really big on boasting where the region is. And, you know, I guess I can understand that because they always, it seems like they like to name their wines after where it's from. This actually is made of two different grapes, and one of the grapes it's made from is one of the same grapes that's made, makes the Armagnac. So I thought that that was really neat that I happened to run upon um, this actual wine and that they happen to tie together like that. This is abs absolutely a dry white wine from France. It has 10.5% alcohol content, which is on the lower side for alcohol, but when you pay $7.99 for a bottle, that's about what you're going to get, okay? Um, now, my fear normally is when I pay less than $15 for a bottle, that I'm not gonna get great quality. And so that was my biggest fear here. But when you're shopping for party and you're shopping in bulk, you don't want to pay $15 to $20 a bottle. It gets pretty pricey, okay? Especially when a lot of people don't drink wine and you're probably going to wind up taking a lot back or lugging a lot home. You want to make sure it's something that was affordable and that you probably could drink too. The medium body is dry, which means no sugar. Once again, I just want to let you know that means that they keep on fermenting it until all the sugar is out of the grape. It does not mean it has no flavor, okay? And this wine does not disappoint in that area. So when we smell this wine and get the aromas, and um, always when you have wine, you want to let it breathe. So um, you see there's no top on it right now. This is a screw top, I'm sorry, sidebar. And a lot of people think because wine has screw top, that means it's cheap. But nowadays, a lot of winemakers are going to screw tops because cork is expensive to make and so if they want to keep down and cut costs like a lot of businesses are doing now they decided that they would go to a screw top they've realized that it really does not affect the quality of the wine okay um so you open it up and let it breathe always you want to let it breathe at least 30 minutes um for red wine and for white wine hey i mean i, I drink it right out the bottle but you want to let it breathe when you're smelling the aroma so i let it breathe and you really smell citrus and apple in this wine. Citrus, apple, and like some floral notes also in this wine here. And that's really good for dry wine because a lot of people are scared the dry wines are not going to be have any good fruit flavor. And that's just absolutely a myth. All right. 
This is not a tasting portion. Um, but this is what I'm going to drink today. Not too yellow. Not, you know, some wines get really deep yellow. Our wine today is not. It's a nice light color. Okay. Medium body. I, I, hold on, let me drink some down. Mm. So I can swirl around. Which, if there are legs on the glass, okay? It sits there for a little while. Medium body wine. Less legs, light body. Longer sits heavier body, okay? So this wine, you when you drink it, I'm sorry, since I already tasted it. I don't want to leave y'all hanging. You absolutely get the citrus. You get some lime flavors, some green apple flavors. Um, the wine tasted no says this mineral flavor. I don't taste that much. I'm going to be honest. It, it leaves a nice clean finish. It just is really good. Like it makes you want to take another sip and it makes you just want to really keep drinking. It's very clean, not too heavy, and it gives you really good fruit forward. Okay. Um, and it makes me really happy about that. It'd be great on a summer day. Um, it'd be great also if you are um, out with friends having appetizers or a nice salad and you want a glass of wine because you're watching those calories. Um, and so this would be a great pairing with that. What I would put it along the line of is right in between a Pinot Grigio and a, and a Sauvignon Blanc. Right in the middle, smack dab in the middle. And it's phenomenal. I love both wines, um, so that's great. If you're looking to mature your palate, and you've only drank it, well, if you only drink Moscato, don't jump to this because it's going to be dry. But if you've made it to a Riesling and you're like, okay, I want to get to the next step, get more sugar out of my wine, um, this will be a good way to go. I really, really like this. Um, so try it. It is, once again, the Domaine de Puy, the de Puy, Côte de Gascony, which, once again, is named after the region. And I would pair it also, oh, Topless, go out with your with your with your people. Um, a lot of uh, companies do topless bars for holiday parties, and in between each meal, each plate, so that you get the full flavor of your meal. Take a sip of this. Use it as an aperitif. Cleanse your palate because it leaves your palate just like I said. It's a nice, clean, crisp finish. So that would be great for this. Um, rule of thumb: white wine, white meat. Red wine, red meat. There are a few exceptions, as always, but this will go great with shellfish, gumbo, the spiciness, and this will, oh my goodness, great. Um, fish, shellfish, I can see it with all of that, okay? So it's a wonderful, wonderful wine to pair with your meals also, all right? Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to type in the comments below. I'm going to try to wrap it up because I don't want to keep you all on here too long. Another good thing about this, I've told everybody I'm a migraine sufferer. My biggest fear is when I do cheap wine that my head is going to bang the next day. So with migraine su sufferers, hangovers are times 50 the next day. The worst, okay? Um, and what I found out is the imported stuff happens to be better for me than the domestic stuff. Uh, this is imported, so that was a good reason for me to try it. And also, it's organic. Um, they could put less sulfites in it, which is a big thing for migraine sufferers. If you have migraines and you're looking to drink wine, the less sulfates, the better. Sulfites, the better. Okay? Run from red wine unless it's organic and sulfite free. The less sulfites, the better. This, actually, they say that they put less sulfites. They, um... Also use organic manure. I know nobody wants to hear that, but it's a vineyard. They use grapes. Let's be honest. Um, they need it. So organic manure. They use demineralized water so that the pH level is lower. In the United States, because we are so greedy and we want to produce everything so fast. You know, we have all these steroids and pesticides on our food. Um, they use 40% less pesticides than most winemakers. So that's a wonderful thing. And for me, it was a no-brainer as to why I would drink this wine. So between the taste, the way that they produce it, um, what it pairs well with, uh, and the price. Like, I'm going to go buy me a case, okay? The price for $7.99. The highest I saw it for was $12.99 online, and it was still sold out at that distributor. 
it was sold out. So that just lets you know how great this wine is. When you go online and it's sold out, <laughs> you better try it. So go to Benny's, like us uh, at Intoxicating Tastings on Facebook um, and YouTube, and try this. Um, it's Sunday night. I have about a half a bottle left, and I am sure I'm going to finish it tonight. <laughs> so, if you have any questions, leave it there. Um, I'm glad that you all tuned in, and I look forward to doing the next review. I don't have many people request beer. I've done some alcohol, I've done some wine, I've done some champagne, I've done Prosecco or sparkling, I guess I should say sparkling um, wine, and... Um, I just want to know what you want me to do next. So, um, I am glad that you all tuned in to Intoxicating Tastings. And I look forward to coming to you next week with another review.